our council meeting, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sylvia, roll call. Mayor Clark. Here. Council President Robinson. Here. Councilor Henderson. Here. Councilor King is here via conference call. Here. Thank you. Councilor Harris. Here. Councilor Kuyper. Here. Councilor Cook. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. We move on to consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. We have a presentation tonight for an Eagle Scout. I do not know if he is present. Adrian Moons, are you here tonight? Okay, we didn't get an RSVP, but we will send um, him his certificate. Uh, congratulations to Adrian, if you are watching. Nice job. Can you pass that down? Can you congratulate him, please? Um, um, and we have citizen comments. I do have Mayor, a couple. Before we get to citizen comments, we have the uh, swearing in of the police officer, which is oh. not on the agenda, but we usually would do that during this time. Absolutely. Chief Grove. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Council. Wireless and strong. <laughs> so it is my pleasure uh, tonight to uh, swear in our newest police officer, Officer Chris Pierce. So, Chris, why don't you come up and sit front and center while I talk about you for just a couple minutes. And then uh, Chris also has some family here that I'm going to let him introduce in the back of the room. Uh, Officer Pierce is originally from the Warrington, Oregon area. He uh, attended uh, college at Oregon State University, earning a Bachelor of Science in Speech Communication. And prior to coming to us, he worked at... Costco and has also uh, quite a bit of experience, as you can probably figure out, in the fitness arena uh, as a trainer and actually was a co-owner of a fitness facility in the area here. So uh, Chris competed against about 100 other applicants for our uh, the first position we filled um, and rose to the top as a recruit applicant, uh, beating out uh, other applicants that had police experience. So he did a tremendous job and uh, we're obviously uh, very high on him. He's a tremendous young man. So before we get to the uh, official stuff, why don't you take a second, Chris, and introduce your family. Just push down on that, that little button there. Working. <clears throat> All right, in the back of the room here on the left-hand side, um, if you guys want to stand, it'd be easier this way. <laughs> You're on the spot. Starting on the right is my father, Jim Pierce. Uh, he's a retired Oregon State police officer. My mother, Debbie, to his right. My sister is in the back of the room filming and recording this right now. <laughs> so I expect a great video. And my girlfriend, Natalie, is in the back corner. My nephew, Alex, came with my sister, but he went to a family friend's house to uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs> great. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I know it means an awful lot to Chris, and it, and it also means a lot uh, to us to have you here supporting him. Uh, and as Chris said, um, he came about this uh, decision probably somewhat naturally, having grown up with a father uh, that served with the state police. So, uh, okay, with that, we will get with the business. We'll see if we can get this mic to pick up as much as possible here. We have uh, two things we're going to go through. The, the uh, first is the oath of office that I will um, swear Chris to. And then uh, the second is the criminal justice code of ethics. And for the sake of time, uh, I'm not going to read through it, but I will have him sign that as well. Okay, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. 
I, Christopher Pierce. I, Christopher Pierce. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. And laws of the United States. And laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the State of Oregon. The Constitution and laws of the State of Oregon. The laws and ordinances of the City of Sherwood. The laws and ordinances of the City of Sherwood. And the rules and regulations of the Sherwood Police Department. And the rules and regulations of the Sherwood Police Department. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties of the office of police officer. Discharge the duties of the office of police officer. During my continuance therein. During my continuance therein. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Sign right there. And um, I actually uh, have it with me here. Oftentimes I, f I forget the most important piece. <laughs> and I think the last time Captain Daniel scurried to the police department to get the badge for me. So, But I have it here, and I'm going to ask um, Chris's father, Jim Pierce, to come up and do the honors. Stay right where you're at. You can't run away from it. <laughs> 41 is restricted. <laughs> So, Chief, I'm going to, while he's signing that, i um, going to push you on the spot. I think for the benefit of uh, the council and the audience, uh, Chris will not be seen around the streets of um, Sherwood right away because he is a recruit. Can you, in a couple sentences, explain the process from here on out? Because um, I think most people don't know what happens after tonight. So Chris has begun, his first day was Monday, uh, yesterday, and so he has begun a rigorous, uh, for the most part, 18-month training process that will involve uh, field training through the Sherwood Police Department and involve, involve attendance uh, at the Oregon uh, Basic Police Academy in Salem uh, through DPSST. So... Uh, we will schedule him for basic academy based on when they have room, and so we'll get him started and have gotten him started on his field training, and then he'll go to the academy at some point, come back and wrap up his field training. And once all the coaches uh, have have uh, signed off that they've taught him everything they know and, and he's ready to be released, he will uh, turn the keys on a patrol car all by himself and, and uh, go from there. So it goes fast. Um, but for us, it doesn't go fast enough, but it's good training, and uh, we have a great group of coaches that will, uh, that will really get him ready. So, thank you. Well, congratulations to Chris. We welcome you, and um, thank you for joining our fantastic police department, and we look forward to seeing you out on the beat. <laughs> Okay, so um, we can move on to citizen comment. And thank you to his family for coming as well. Thank you very much. Um, citizen comments. The first citizen comment that I form that I have is Yvonne Gebhardt. Can she come forward? Welcome, Yvonne. So we have some new technology that we're breaking in. You do not have to get very close to these microphones, um, but you do turn it down a little bit. Like that. And is the blue light on? Yes, the blue okay. light is on. I am Yvonne Gebhardt, and my address is 22146 Southwest Orland Street in Sherwood. As a 20-plus year resident of Sherwood, it has been really something to live through the growth and prosperity of our community. And this evening, I would like to share with you what I believe are topics of great importance to Sherwood. 
First uh, is to support families by making sure that city government has done all within the law, including Second, second Amendment rights, to provide protection of people and property through police and law enforcement with continued swift response of emergency personnel. Next is supporting Sherwood families by maintaining a business-friendly environment and free market approach to growth and policies that affect commerce. Parks and recreation are essential to a healthy, balanced community where members of our community can relax mind, body, and spirit. The budget process is essential to our community's peace of mind in not incurring debt without positive revenue options, planning and avoiding government growth in the name of community growth. Second is transportation, which includes scheduled and consistent street maintenance and supporting these in the budget. Many of the major arterials that we use are actually governed and maintained by other governmental entities and maintaining intergovernmental representation for Sherwood's interests as we grow is paramount. Third is Sherwood's infrastructure through utilities and water. Finally, informing and providing educational opportunities to constituents on the workings, processes, and procedures involved in keeping our municipality vibrant and law-abiding, and most importantly, continued encouragement for civic duty and involvement in our form of government. In closing, I want to encourage each one of our honorable members of the City Council <laughs> by saying that each of you is a very special and important resource to Sherwood. To stay positive and communicate with bounds within the bounds of love and respect. But <laughs> if there is no love, I still have a minute and 14 seconds. <laughs> if there is no love, then at the very least, respect the office for which each of you holds. Thank you, Yvonne. I've got Jennifer Fagisher. <coughs> or Fagish, I'm sorry. Now that I, kn I saw you. <laughs> Ready, set, go. My name is Jennifer Fagerstrom, 23897 Southwest Sanders Terrace in Sherwood. And um, I am a member of the Sherwood Main Street Board of Directors. And on behalf of the board, we wanted to officially welcome all of our new counselors and our new mayor and congratulate you. We're looking forward to working together with the council um, with the Sherwood Main Street program in the coming months and years. And as some of you are, actually several of you are new to the council, you may not be familiar with Sherwood Main Street, so we thought we would do a very quick primer tonight and um, share with you some of our objectives and goals and kind of who we are and what we do. So we partner with Main Streets across Oregon. Some of our sister cities include McMinnville, Tigard, Hillsboro, uh, others such as that. And our goal is to see our old town revitalized and to drive tourism and activity, which will ultimately help our community and our business thrive. Uh, we also provide old town support to large scale events such as cruising, Robin Hood Festival, St. Patrick's Day, and others. And this year, we're actually coordinating the Halloween festivities, so we're looking forward to that. We also partner with local community organizations, such as the Historical Society and the Chamber of Commerce. We have two board members who are serving as chamber ambassadors. We're also excited about the opening of the new Center of Arts in Old Town and look forward to partnering with Maggie and her team. We've had the privilege to work closely with your top-notch city staff over um, the last several years, and Sherwood Main Street's had the privilege to be a liaison between the city staff and the business community. Uh, for example, we coordinated regular opportunities for city staff and business owners to come together during the Old Town Street Project last year, and this forum allowed for questions and concerns to be raised and addressed and kept lines of communication open. 
We also anticipate that there will continue to be a need for this type of liaise work, um, particularly after the new center opens, because that's gonna provide a lot of opportunities for Old Town business. It also will come with its own challenges. As we all know from other events, anytime you bring 400 people into Old Town, there's always uh, both opportunities and challenges, everything from parking to um, businesses staying open late and other such things. So as our Old Town continues to grow, we look forward to working with this council, and we do want to formally request that the council reassign a liaison to our board of directors. This will keep those lines of communication open and assure maximum benefit to Old Town, particularly as we have further conversations about economic growth um, opportunities. Our regular general meetings generally have upwards of 20 community members and business owners in attendance. We have 10 active board members, and um, whatever counselor participates on the board will really have their ear to the ground in terms of what the local constituency is really talking about and getting involved with. And Sherwood Main Street is also a, a volunteer-led organization. Not sure if you're aware of that. We do not have any paid staff. Over the last year and a half, it's been primarily funded by four board members, although our MAP project, which you should there's some samples there for you to have, um, was funded through support from local businesses. And we've distributed the um, historical map as well as the business map, and then now we're working on a winery map, which will be distributed as well to drive some tourism down into town. Those have been really, really well received. Um, and we will be looking for other funding opportunities to fund that, of course. So we'd like to request a future time, I've got 30 seconds, um, to come and give a more thorough presentation on Sherwood Main Street, its goals and projected outcomes for the coming year. We'd also like to engage more fully with the city related to economic development. So thank you all for letting me come and present. Questions? Thank you very much, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, so currently we are running on a skeletal crew because we have um, two vacancies. Mm -hmm. And so um, I served on the, the, as the liaison to the Sherwood Main Street, and I will tell all of you it is a great program. Thoroughly enjoyed being the liaison. And um, when we have a full council in May, I will be assigning you a liaison. That's fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Yeah. Thank you. Bud Ranson. Go ahead and sit down and just state your name and your address, and then you can address, right. go ahead. Uh, okay, I'm Bud Ransom. I live in 15704 or 5, Sherwood, right over here. Um, three years ago, I was asked by uh, a uh, member of the Sherwood High School to <laughs> place a slab up there for their um, batting cages, which we did. And they wanted to bid, and I gave them a bid of 14000 bucks. Then we decided, since I have a over 40 men's senior league semi-pro team, that we could use the field. So everything's been great for three years, and now all of a sudden they're telling me I, they want me to pay 1000 bucks to use the field. And I talked to the Parks Department over here, Lance Gilligan. He told me I had to come talk to you guys to see if I can get that grandfathered in. Who do I talk to, you guys? <laughs> well, I would say that you go to Joe to get some additional information on that. Yeah, um, let me get your contact information, and then I'll have um, my staff get back to you. So this is the first I've heard of this, so I don't know the history and the relationship. So, Who are um, you? I'm the city manager, so I'll give you my card, and um, I'll work with my staff to find out what we can do and what we can't do. So, Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anything else? Now? Yeah. Can I go Thank now? you. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. If you want to speak, you can fill out a form. Do you, do you want to speak? They're right in the back. Um, and you can go ahead and <laughs> I don't have any other forms. And so if you want to just fill that out and come on forward and hand it in, you just go right ahead. You, you can come forward and fill it out and give it to, to Sylvia afterwards. That's totally fine. Just state your, state your full name and, and your address and then you can go ahead. My name is Michelle Boyle. I live at 22716 Southwest Lincoln Street. If you're a baby boomer and your kids have grown and you've and moved out, 
and you'd like to downsize to a home with less expense and upkeep, what are your options here in Sherwood? If you have aging parents who you want to live near you, but not with you, and they have limited income, but aren't ready for assisted living, what are our options here in Sherwood? If you've recently graduated from college, got a new job, you have student loans to pay, you want to live a simple car free existence while you still want to have the ability to stay engaged in your community. What are our options here in Sherwood? My name is Michelle Boyle. I'm a Sherwood resident for eight years. I'm here to begin a dialogue about tiny houses. I'm here to be an advocate for socially and fiscally responsible living. As you may know, I'm building a tiny house right now in the driveway of my rental home just up the hill. When I'm done, I'd like to consider moving out of my rental home and into my tiny home. But what are my options if I want to do so and stay in Sherwood? Let me be clear, apartment living is really not for everybody. Our aging population may have difficulty climbing stairs. And I can assure you growing young families living in our community do not enjoy lugging groceries and strollers up several flights of stairs either. If you personally had the choice between living in a quaint, small cottage or an apartment, renting an apartment with a pool you never use, which would you choose? I've been invited to come here today to share my opinion on what can and what should be done with the newly annexed area west of Sherwood. In my opinion, Sherwood has an amazing opportunity to set themselves apart once again from our sprawling neighbors and to consider more thoughtful and sustainable living options, like tiny house community. Not everybody needs or can sustain a 2,300 square foot house. And the recent downturn in the economy has proven that bigger is not always better. While I understand that many of our developer friends may initially favor apartments and large homes for their positive return on investment, when you consider the carbon footprints or the average sustained home values per square foot, I would encourage them, and I would encourage you, to take another look. You would have to be in a cave to not have noticed that tiny houses are gaining popularity on all fronts. Empty nesters, baby boomers, recent college grads, and small families with their eyes on sustainability are all eyeing the financial advantages of living responsibly. These are not poor residents that have no other options but to live tiny. They instead, and like myself, look forward to spending less on housing costs so we can actually give more and spend more time with dining out, traveling, contributing more to our time of our time and money to nonprofits and art-focused organizations. If you are in charge of recruiting perfect residents for Sherwood, aren't those the kinds of people you would want to attract? If you want to gain national spotlight for being a progressive, socially and environmentally responsible town, shouldn't you consider zoning rules which encourage the lifestyles that focus on those goals? I'm here to start the dialogue, but I'm not just here to start the dialogue and leave it up to you to finish it. What can I do? <clears throat> Who do I talk to? How do I make this happen? What committee should I join? What other evidence would you like me to present? I may be the only person who stands before you to talk about tiny houses, but rest assured it's only because so many have not actively considered the out-of-box thinking that they require. Once you think about it, tiny homes and communities make a lot of sense. They make sense for us all, residents and townships alike, and are something that even the most extreme of community activists will no doubt rally behind. You said you're building one? Yes. Okay. So when is it done? Can we come see it? Actually, um, I'm, having a, uh, I'm having an almost open house, um, actually this Sunday. Um, and so it's about 50 or 60% done if you want to see one in I construction. I absolutely um, would love to see it. Yeah, it's at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Okay. 
22716 Lincoln. I invite anybody to come. So far we have 40 people RSVP'd, so it's going to be a party. 42. 42? 43. And I maybe can tell you husband. that there's not 42 parking spaces on Lincoln. <laughs> no. We'll walk. So you can hike from here. Actually, if you walk, if you park okay. at Snyder, you can walk straight down, and MJ's house is on the right. I've already okay. been there to see it. Uh, in fact, she partnered with Public Works yes. um, to get some materials from the um, home that's off of Elworth. Uh, nice. Because she wanted to use some recyclable exactly. materials. Um, materials and so it's about halfway done. I will have a big <coughs> grand opening when it's completely done. But a lot of people are just as interested in the construction of these mm -hmm. houses. And they want to look at them. They're built just like residential mm -hmm. homes with two by fours and plumbing and electrical. And, and does this one happen to be on wheels? Because I yes, know a lot of does. them are on the trailers. Yeah, mine is on an eight, um, an eight foot wide by 24 foot long triple axle trailer. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's actually kind of big. If you look at the ones on TV, probably your first reaction will be, oh, it's yeah. so big. So yeah. I was just showing my daughter a community of them where they were all in a home. She was fascinated by that. Yeah. So, so even if Sherwood <laughs> decides not to necessarily embrace tiny houses on wheels, there's a lot of opportunities for tiny houses. Yes, Cottages. There are. Um, you know, again, cottage type living. There's just a lot of opportunities. And I think it's a real opportunity to add some diversity to our housing and diversity mm -hmm. to our population. Um, and gain, again, a lot of notoriety in the meantime. Yes. Thanks for starting yeah, the conversation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so there's, much. There's a lot of great um, uh, uh, neighborhoods like that on the East Coast that have that entire concept, and it's it's fascinating. It's mm -hmm. a great concept. Yeah. So, Mayor and Council, she asked some questions about where to go to, and we'll follow up. Um, the Planning Commission mm -hmm. and Julia's staff, I mean, both Sherwood West, uh, which is not annexed in the city, so I want to just clarify <laughs> <laughs> for the public. But um, in terms of developing rules and consideration, I think it's something that the Planning Commission, um, maybe you guys have already talked about it. So you can get Ms. Boyle an application for Planning Commission should she wish to apply <laughs> and also talk to her more about her tiny house. Thank you so much Thank for coming you forward. Very Thank much. you. I appreciate that. Who gets this? Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> no additional citizen comments? All right. Um, on to new business. Uh, resolution 2015-027, assessing sidewalk construction costs. On 22050 Southwest Hall Place, Sherwood, Oregon, 97140, <coughs> and directing city recorder to enter such assessment in the city's lien docket. Craig Sheldon. So uh, this is part of our sidewalk assistance program. This property at the address the mayor had mentioned mm -hmm. uh, has not uh, has signed up for the agreement, but has not uh, come through on all the payments yet. And we would like to work with this property owner, but we're also asking. Uh, the amended item that Ms. Sylvia had put together was to move it out till June 1st to see if right. we can collect payment. And uh, you guys are the ones that have to authorize for being able to place a lien on a property for the sidewalk program. Council? So I'm confused. You're asking us to approve an extension before this is re return to us in the form of resolution? So how this works is we have to place this on the council agenda. So mm -hmm. the, the property owner has been uh, notified a minimum of 15 times, if not more. Uh, it, went on the, it goes on the council packet, as well as another letter gets sent out at the same time letting the uh, property owner know that they can come to tonight's council meeting to similar to a hearing process. Um, at that time, they received a letter from the city uh, they called and uh, made another payment uh, and asked if they could wait till they got their tax return. So we asked on the amended to push it out till June 1st before the city recorder can actually uh, move forward with the lien. So it's hopefully helpful. they will pay their bill and we don't have to do the lien process. So Craig, at this point, you're amending the resolution to ask for an extension. So you have a, a new uh, <coughs> resolution in front of you to Right? No? No. So? Yes. Okay. No, uh, 
<coughs> Craig, sorry, the council does not have a resolution in front of them. The, what Craig is asking is to amend the resolution and staff has looked at some language if the council so chose to um, consider that, um, just to add some additional language, extending the effectiveness of adding the property to the lien document, um, the lien docket, effective June, <coughs> June 1st, Craig? Yeah. Effective June 1st. So the resolution, if you chose, would be adopted, it would be effective, but that property owner would not go on a lien docket, allowing them time to pay that balance until June 1st. Okay. So that is the amendment the staff is looking at. Right, if you want to consider that, we'll provide you with language. Yeah. Is, is council interested in considering that? I have a couple questions first. Um, how much have they paid, um, and what type of payment did they just make? We just made a $100 payment. Okay. Uh, I believe the bill was around 800 and some dollars, nine, almost 900 and it's, so it's down to $200. And they said they would, as soon as they got their tax return, they would pay it. So they have actively been communicating and making payments with you? They have been, act yes. And then they've missed some on their monthly payments, but we give them 12 months to pay. So the 12 months come up in the end of December. And then they have several notices that's been sent out, as our code states, and it has to come in front of you before we can move forward. So we move forward because we hadn't heard anybody from anybody for a while, and then we actually, the letter that went to them saying that it was coming to council, uh, that actually got the Motivated. attention, and they called, and we were able to work some stuff out. So I'd like to, I would like to give them the opportunity to pay the bill before the lien process, and that's what Sylvia and I have talked about. I can write on my HOA bill, so I'm fine Council, letting you have it. You, did you have and, and they indicated that they would, they would pay that once they got their taxes, tax returns back, that which would, is that yes. correct? Yes, they had ran into some hardships, okay. and uh, okay. they said they would pay once they got there. I mean, the deal, the deal is if they don't pay and you guys approve this as June 1st, we'll put a lien on the property from the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it, see, it seems reasonable to, mm -hmm. I do too. I'd like to hear the language. So the language is um, under section two of the whereas is. It is after the first sentence where it reads, the city council directs the city recorder to enter the assessment in the docket of city liens. The amendment would be comma, effective July 1, to June 1, 2015, if not paid in full, period. Not paid in full by that date. Correct. Well, you don't have to... The, you don't have to add that additional language by that date because it, it already states the date. Oh, okay. So the amendment would be to amend section two of resolution, sentence one, removing the period after city liens and adding the language effective June 1, 2015, if not paid in full, period. I move that we amend the resolution 2015-027 as stated by our city recorder. And then you would also need an amendment as to the amount, so you would, section oh. one would then be reduced to 200. <clears throat> Counselor, what we risk with adjusting the amount is if the, if the customer comes in and makes $50 payments, then this resolution is, is then incorrect. Mm -hmm. the, the bottom line is, is the record will show that the amount that's gonna go on the city's lien docket is the unpaid balance. So, so we don't stays. indicate an amount allowing the customer to come in and make whatever payments up until June 1. Okay, so no payment will be listed then. On the on the correct. So, well, so doesn't so Section 1 say $300 is due? Yes, but at this time, the, the customer has already paid $100. Right. So actually, the balance is a $200 balance as of tonight. Which is why I said, so should we change Section 1 to say 200 instead of 300 Well... Oh, sure, we can do that, sure. Yeah. Okay. I amend my motion to include changing the amount from 300 to 200. Do I have a second on my motion to amend the resolution? Second. Can you say the name? <coughs> okay, I'll second it. Okay, so I'm sorry, Mayor, you have a motion, your first motion, and you don't have a second yet. Yeah. So do you want to... She just seconded it. Your first motion or your second motion? Okay, you know what? I am <laughs> removing my motions from the table and I'm going to make a new motion. Perfect. <laughs> so, my new motion is to amend resolution 2015-027 as recommended by our city recorder, Sylvia Murphy, to also in change the amount owed from 300 to 200. I need a second. 
Second. All in favor of the amended resolution? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we have an amended resolution. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Do you also, <laughs> do you also plan on amending a motion for section two? That was my original statement. Is, it, is that was your original motion? And you didn't have a second for that one. I incorporated yeah, what you, your recommendation, I incorporated all of your recommendations. In your motion. In my yes. motion. Thank I you. Did. Is that council's understanding? Yes. 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 Okay. I hear that is council's understanding that my motion amended to include all of the changes that you recommended. Thank you. Okay. Then I now move that we approve resolution 2015-027 as amended. Do I have a second? I second. Awesome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you <coughs> very much, Trey. We'll move on to resolution 2015-028, authorizing the city manager to enter into a professional services contract with AMAC Foster Wheeler for environmental consult consultant services associated with the Tannery Brownfield site assessment. Julia Heidi. And Mayor, may I say a few Absolutely. words? Okay. So I am an employee of AMAC, as is my husband. We're geologists and project managers for AMAC, which is a multinational global company with about 40,000 people um, in various offices across the globe. We have an office in Tigard, and we have a nationally recognized Brownfields expert uh, and his team uh, prepared a proposal in response to the city's uh, request for proposals to work uh, on the tannery, Brownfields project. So he and his team put together a proposal. Um, they went and he and his team conducted an interview, went to an interview process, <coughs> excuse me, and they intend to work on the tannery project under a grant. Um, my husband and I did not have uh, any uh, role in the proposal or the interview and do not intend to have a role uh, in the project. Um, however, in the interest of avoiding any conflict of interest, I'll be recusing myself from discussion and from the vote. So, all right, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Graham, you yep. could approve. Yeah. All right, Julia. Thank you, um, Councillor Kuiper. Actually, said a little bit of my intro, um, but um, just a little bit of background. Um, the city received a grant from the EPA um, in. Well, we submitted a grant in January of 2014, and actually, AMEC Foster Wheeler um, pro bono. Um, help assist us with um, submitting the grant application. Um, they understood that they would have to go through an RFP process and, and be judged fairly, but they do that for, for many jurisdictions around the state. Um, and they don't always get the, the award, you know, contract award either, and they understand that. Um, EPA awarded us the grant in late June, early July of um, 2014, and we um, submitted some additional paperwork um, to, to finalize that late August. Um, the grant period is actually from October 2014 to October 2017, so it's a, a long process, but it's a $200,000 um, grant. The consultant um, piece um, that was budgeted in the EPA um, grant was $143,000. Three hundred, I believe. Yes, one forty-three, three hundred. Um, we went through. Um, I, I actually prepared the RFP. I consulted with some um, other jurisdictions that had done brownfield RFPs um, to do that. Um, we opened it up. Um, it actually was opened um, November fourth. Um, was open until November twenty-sixth, and that's actually. Um, an error in your staff report, I said October 30th through November 24th. That was my original intent, but um, I had gotten delayed. And I, when I was preparing the staff report, I was looking at um, the first RFP. Um, we had, because we're not brownfield experts um, here at the city, we had internal staff review um, the RFP, but we also um, got assistance from um, a staff from Oregon DEQ as well as um, someone from Business Oregon, which is the State Economic Development Agency, um, helped us score the proposals. When we um, had two, top two we interviewed, and Amec Foster Wheeler was the consultant firm that we selected unanimously from that interview process. So what is in front of you is um, basically a resolution that would authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Amec Foster Wheeler for up to $143,000 
for $300. Um, there's a little bit of contingency in there, so their actual budget came in a little bit less than that, but there's some contingency up to that EPA grant funded amount. It's 100% covered by that EPA grant, so there are no costs to the city um, other than we pay the bill, we submit the invoice to EPA and then get reimbursed for that. Um, and um, because this was not included in this fiscal year's budget, because we actually hadn't gotten the award um, for it yet, there'll be a supplemental budget coming in the future to just sort of document the, the, the revenue in and the expenditure out, which should be net zero because it's fully funded. Any questions? Council, any questions? Do I have well, a motion? I, yeah, I have a question. When okay. was the um, selection made? When you, I heard you um, say when I, the RFP was yeah, out. Yeah, I, I don't know the exact date. It was um, early January that the okay. selection was made. Any other questions? Do I have a motion? I motion that we approve resolution 20150-028. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Piper, you may <coughs> join us again. City Manager. I have uh, two items tonight, Mayor and Council. Uh, the first is a reminder <coughs> once again, we are getting much closer to the opening of our new Sherwood Center for the Arts on February 28th, so um, I encourage everyone uh, to mark your calendars uh, to come. I think it's 11.30 to 3. Okay, I'll, I'll stop. Sorry, <laughs> Councillor Harris. Um, the other thing I know that under consent tonight, uh, you appointed members to a new uh, advisory board, the police advisory board, which I think we're all very excited. A number of those folks are here in audience. And I was just going to ask maybe if uh, the new members of the police advisory board, if you could stand just... Um, Quickly. Yay. Yay. Thank you. I so want to thank them for their patience. This process took a little longer than maybe normal, but uh, um, I think we're going to have a great board. Council, uh, Councilor Linda Henderson is the liaison to the committee. Um, I think they're going to have a pretty full plate pretty quickly, and I think uh, marijuana is something that they're probably going to grapple with very soon. So. Uh, Welcome aboard. Any questions for um, myself or the staff that are here? Any questions? All right, I'm going to let uh, Councilor King go so that he can go ahead, Councilor King. What did he say? Hey, what did we do? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, <laughs> Councilor Kirk. I just want to mention that um, one of our local Cub Scout packs, thanks to the effort of Jackie Stoddard, Cub Scout Pack 710 is currently selling raffle tickets for the opportunity to win two round trip domestic airline tickets on Southwest Airlines. And only a limited number of tickets will be sold. For more information, you can contact Cubmaster710 at pack710.com or any of your local Cub Scouts. The drawing is going to be held the second week of March. Thank you. Uh, so Joe stole my thunder. But we had our uh, cultural arts meeting last night, and uh, if you haven't received this in the mail, you might be. It's very pretty. The invitation for the grand opening of the Sherwood Center for the Arts. It's 11 to 3. Uh, there'll be snacks provided by Sweet Story, and also Sesame Donuts has donated donut holes. Drinks from uh, the city of Sherwood, and also uh, there's rumored to be some drinks coming from Symposium. Not confirmed yet. I'm sure they'll kick in. Hopefully. There's uh, self-guided tours. You'll be able to see all of the facility, including the sound areas, the dressing rooms. Um, there's going to be live entertainment on the stage throughout the entire event. Uh, there'll be art activities for the kids and adults and some take-home souvenirs to um, remember the event. So it, it will be a pretty great um, day at the for Sherwood, there's been a ton of buzz, not just here in Sherwood, but a lot of people around the community and around Washington County talking about how amazing it is that a community like Sherwood and the size of Sherwood has a performing arts center coming to it. Um, it's kind of unheard of for a community of this size 
to have something of this caliber going in, and everybody is really excited about it, and not just Sherwoodians, but we had people at our commission last night from Dayton, from Tualatin, and people are really, really excited about it, and Sherwood should be super proud of themselves for getting this in, and it's pretty exciting. Um, also, we have two, speaking of exciting, there's two vacancies on that committee, and um, Mayor Clark and I were discussing it. This is such an exciting time for the arts right now in Sherwood that it's crazy that we don't have 100 applications. So tell your friends. <laughs> they're coming. I know they're coming. That's why. <laughs> tell your friends, anyone who is remotely interested in the arts, even if they like looking at the arts, you don't have to be an artist to be on the Cultural Arts Committee. I am not an artist, and I go to the meetings. Um, you really don't. The, the uh, people that we've had applications in the past were not all artists. So all you have to do is enjoy art, um, find it interesting. You do not have to be an artist. So if you're interested or you know somebody who might be interested, um, they only meet once a month. It's not a huge time commitment, um, but it's a really fun meeting. I actually look forward to going to those meetings. I told them last night, it's probably the funnest meeting <laughs> I go to each month. No offense to the current um, <laughs> hey, people. But it is a really fun meeting. So if you need something to do once a month that is, is really quite fun, I would encourage you to apply. Thanks for coming tonight also. Thank you. Council President Bunker? As uh, liaison to both the Planning Commission and the Sherwood West Concert Plan, um, liaison, I want to extend once again an invitation to come to our meetings. Um, I don't recall specifically what we're discussing next Tuesday at 7 o'clock is our Planning Commission meeting. It's our regular meeting. They are opposite the City Council meetings on Tuesday nights. Um, because of the fact the, that uh, Measure 91 passed, we are in um, a very interesting time and we'd really like to get the uh, citizens comment on the marijuana issues that are coming up. They really involve two things. One is medical marijuana regulation and the other is recreational use uh, marijuana regulation and they're two very different things with very different deadlines. And so we're going to be addressing medical, uh, yeah, medical marijuana dispensaries first. And we'd love to get any input that you have on that. Secondly, our Sherwood West concept plan uh, has had their initial meeting, went very well. I think we're looking for a different location so that more people can come and hear all the testimony. Um, the speaker, the microphones at Edie Ridge um, did not reach to almost all of the participants on the committee, let alone the citizens who were there to participate and listen. So. Um, we are searching for a different location, and we welcome you to that. I keep mentioning that because I think there's some misinformation out there about what Sherwood West concept plan is, and I really urge you to both attend the meetings and to read about it on the city's website, which, if you haven't noticed, mm -hmm. is a new revamped website that's just great. I have looked through it, and it's just I think it's awesome. I think they've done a very good job. Um, so please, please come to those two things. Um, secondly, I just wanted to extend my um, thanks to the staff um, for all of their efforts. They've been making quite a bit of effort um, for us new council members to learn all the avenues that the city government undertakes every day. And it's quite um, overwhelming and um, more than extensive. And um, we take our jobs very seriously, um, in addition to welcoming your input. Um, we have been getting some new inquiries and some old inquiries of, you know, I mentioned this at one point, you know, what could, maybe you can look at it again. And please, if you have those concerns, we'd love to hear from you um, because we are open to looking at any issue and every issue that we can that brings to our attention. Um, but Craig um, did a wonderful presentation on water um, for us, and it's a very interesting um, history that we've had here in Sherwood. And um, so please feel free to talk to us about it if you have an interest. And um, thank you for all your efforts. Thank you. Councilor Craig? Well, I have one announcement. Has everyone seen this? Ha. This is a puzzle piece. Um, 
the uh, Sherwood Foundation for the Arts is having a puzzle contest on Saturday. And I love puzzles, so I signed uh, I signed Wa up for the puzzle, as well as my family. Um, unfortunately, two of them have decided not to participate, so it will be me and my husband. We will have our t-shirts that say the Hyper Kuipers, and we will be in this <laughs> contest, and we are going it. to do our best, given our puzzle you know, ability. Um, but anyway, it's going to be a fun, a, a fun time, so if you haven't heard about this, you like to do puzzles, it will be at the police station next Saturday. This the, Saturday. This Saturday. Whoa, thank you, Councilor Henderson. The 21st. Um, I think 11 to 10 to 11 or 11 to... Look at this. Oh, I guess I should... <laughs> <laughs> it's not on here. Oh, heavens. <laughs> um, one to three is the adult competition. So there's two different competitions, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Um, and it's going to be a really fun venue. So if you can't participate this year, try participating next year. Um, I also want to thank all of you for coming. It means so much to us up here. When you get a chance to sit up here on the dais, you really don't know what's coming at you. Um, I still don't know what's coming at me in half the time. But having everyone out there in the audience and, and listening is, is it definitely supports us. Um, I also would like to extend my thanks to, to staff. You guys have been amazing with all of our questions, entertaining question after question and giving us so much information. It really is a lot. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Henderson? Thanks for stealing my puzzle thunder. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> that's okay. Um, as mentioned previously, um, the new police advisory board, um, I'm hoping, wink, wink, Chief, that will get started next month. Okay. And looking forward to that. And of course, those meetings will be open to the public. So even if you're not appointed to the board, um, there's ample opportunity to come and give feedback to staff or to members of the committee. Um, I know that there is um, one member who already posted something on Facebook that mm. basically said, uh, I've been appointed. That was a little premature. But um, <laughs> It's a done deal now, and um, encouraging people to reach out to her and give feedback or come to the meetings when they get started. And um, I think that it will be an exciting new thing um, for Sherwood to do. And thank the members who came tonight. Um, sorry we didn't swear you in um, like um, our police officer. Um, just um, repeating some of the same from last uh, meeting Mary Poppins first two weekends in March over at the um, Short Center for the Arts. It'll be the first production um, in the center. And I was there on Friday um, thinking what an amazing facility. Um, we will have the ability to um, promote and advertise and have events here that we had no other facility available for in Sherwood. So very exciting times for us. It was a long time coming, third time's a charm. Um, from the building standpoint. Um, Councilor Kuiper already mentioned the puzzle competition. Um, I am the liaison to the Community Development Block Grant Program. That's a essentially a three-tier program that's federally funded through Washington County, and it's for um, many different kinds of capital as well as service projects. Um, we always have more grants re um, requested than we have money. Um, it's a very well-run program through the Office of Community Development through Washington County. And um, we just had our meeting last Thursday where we were awarding our recommendations up to the County Commissioner's Board. And again, we had more grants than we had money to give out. Um, two things I wanted to make of note. Um, one project that is extremely interesting if you're, if you're talking about, as MJ was talking about, doing something unique, something that's not done um, either in Oregon or maybe in the West. Um, the city of Cornelius is partnering with Vienna Star to build a library um, in their core downtown, a uh, library on the bottom and, and um, senior living on the top. And what it is, it's, it's a, it's a public-private partnership where they're able to provide senior living and in exchange, seniors who live there also volunteer in the library. And it is a public-private partnership um, not replicated anywhere in the United States and in the little town of Cornelius, which most people just drive through from the way to Hillsboro <laughs> to get to Forest Grove or you know, to head to the beach. 
And um, <clears throat> so and the format of the library was probably the most amazing um, out, outline um, that I've ever seen. And so that is one program that was um, did receive funding. Of course, it still has to go to the county commissioners. And then the other one is um, Project Homeless Connect is um, a program in Washington County that's run through Sunrise Church, which is in Hillsboro. And the person who's been running that program, her name is Kim Marshall, and she lives in Sherwood. So they had requested a $50,000 grant. And what Project Homeless is, is twice a year, they coordinate with uh, medical, dental, um, the employment office, and they bring um, all of these, um, kind of like a trade show, to the church, contact um, homeless members in the community, know they can come and get their teeth fixed or get eyeglasses or have an exam or get their hair cut or find out about getting a job or find out about housing options. And uh, I met her during their presentations and she has been doing this for 10 years, lives in Sherwood, has a young family and you just never know who you're gonna meet, mm -hmm. who lives here, who understands what makes Sherwood a great place to live, um, but actually spends her time helping people who don't live in Sherwood who are homeless. Yeah and has already been doing this for 10 years. So it was a great honor to meet her. Um, her presentation was very, um, very compelling and very compassionate. And um, I hope that the county commissioners, you know, award her program. And what they do is they were asking for a grant that funds them for two years. So they don't have to come back every year. And uh, so it was a great opportunity to meet one of our own residents who does something very special, who impacts people's lives, basic needs lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, I, I um, just wanted to mention her, um, her staff, and other people who work in those agencies. But when she came to make the presentation, we had a little break, and then she came out and introduced herself, and and um, it made me proud to think that um, that somebody chose to live in Sherwood, and but doesn't necessarily abandon the cause that's near and dear to them. So. Um, uh, the only other thing is the Tom Grant concert. Um, which we'll be holding um, at the Sherwood Center for the Arts, which is on March 20th. That's a people-to-people -people fundraiser for a couple of kids who are going on a people-to-people -people exchange. Only two of eight in the entire state, and two of them are from Sherwood. I think that bodes well for Sherwood as well. So that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Um, so I wanted to announce tomorrow night the Growler House is going to be having their one-year anniversary celebration. They're going to have a ribbon cutting as well. That will be 6 to 7. The ribbon cutting will be at 6.30. I'll be there with the owner cutting that ribbon and um, celebrating their one year here in Sherwood. Great, great business. So come on out and support them. That's the Growler House um, right near McDonald's. On, then on Friday, um, the, we're having the Sherwood Police Awards Banquet at Bellavia, and um, I'm excited to attend that. And with our new police advisory board, I think that's going to be pretty exciting to uh, have a big celebration about our police. Uh, and then on Saturday, we've got a lot this week. <laughs> and then on Saturday, uh, if you have time, I think it would be awesome. I've been to this event. It is fantastic. It's Swingin' with Spaghetti at the Sherwood High School. Uh, it supports the band programming. It's great. Go. Sherwood High School. Saturday. A lot of fun. Lots of great music. Yes. Lots great. of fun. Fantastic. The <laughs> yeah. kids, the kids are great. jazz at this venue. They're amazing. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, next okay. week, I know that um, Councilor Harris and myself, I didn't know anyone else had RSVP'd, are going to attend the City Day at the Capitol. Um, so that should be exciting. I know uh, <laughs> that you're there, <laughs> Councilor Cook, all the time. Um, and it might be right now a little more exciting than we anticipated when we yes. signed up uh, a couple months ago. But hey, uh, we're going to go. And I think it's going to be a great opportunity to talk to our state representative, uh, who is John Davis, and um, Senator Kim Thatcher. And I know them both well. And I think we'll have a great day at the Capitol. On uh, Saturday, February 28th, they has already been announced the opening for our wonderful Center for the Arts. Um, also, the ribbon cutting will be at 1130, just so you know. So it, you said 1130, it, our opening said 11 to, and what's great about this is it's open from 11 to four. We're gonna cut the ribbon at 1130, but everybody's gonna get an opportunity 
to go around this amazing facility. And so come, come see the ribbon cutting, come, come for the excitement, but come to see this great new asset for our citizens and our whole um, surrounding communities as well. Everyone's excited about this. That is all I have for tonight. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second it. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Meeting adjourned.